January 1, 1866, Philadelphia cared for approximately 157,000 men during the Civil War, becoming the nation's major medical center and providing over 20 U.S. Army hospitals within its catchment area. As seen in this contemporary listing, there were hospitals ranging from the huge to the very small in size. There was a triage hospital where soldiers arriving from the war were, were received prior to being distributed among the other hospitals. There was a hospital for wounded southern soldiers, and there was a small hospital dedicated to victims of smallpox. The West Philadelphia General Hospital, later designated the Satterley U.S. General Hospital, was constructed in 1862. It initially had a 2,500 bed capacity and was built in just 40 days upon 15 acres of land located within a sparsely developed neighborhood in West Philadelphia. The Satterley was located between 43rd and 45th Street and Baltimore Avenue. The hospital building was located within the shaded central space seen in the map. The balance of the government reservation was, at times, occupied by tents for wounded soldiers. The entire area would become, some 50 years later, a densely populated neighborhood of Philadelphia. The upper portion of the letterhead in this scan detailed the grounds of the gargantuan Satterley facility. As seen here, its alternative name was the U.S. Volunteer Hospital West Philadelphia. In order to accommodate the tremendous influx of soldiers wounded at the Second Battle of Bull Run in August 1862, it became necessary for the Satterley to set up military tents containing hospital beds, which increased its capacity to over 2,800. A bird's eye view of the hospital grounds can be seen in this letterhead. The Satterley was believed to have serviced over 60,000 patients prior to its closure in August of 1865. In 1895, Clarence H. Clark, who was a local banker, funded an area adjacent to the land that had been previously the Satterley Hospital and designated as, it as a park for children. This real photo postcard, circa 1910, shows the former Satterley Hospital grounds in the far background. The statue located within Clark Park is Francis Edwin Elwin's Dickens and Little Nell. In 1989, vandals tore Little Nell from her pedestal and threw her face down to the ground. The statue was subsequently repaired and remains today in the nine-acre Clark Park. Mauer General Hospital, also known as the Chestnut Hill Hospital, was the second vast hospital complex just within the city limits. Its grounds covered 27 acres along the Chestnut Hill track of the Philadelphia and Reading Railroad at what is now known as the Winmore train station. The mower was fashioned in the shape of a giant elliptical corridor containing 47 wards, each like the spokes of a wheel. The hospital bed capacity was 4,000. 20,000 patients passed through the facility between January 1863 and its closure in May of 1865. The Mauer provided many amenities to patients and staff, including isolation wards for those with infections, plumbing with hot water, and flush toilets. The cover seen here was sent from the Chestnut Hill Hospital to Center City, Philadelphia by the U.S. Penny Post. It was mailed on December 26, 1862, and arrived at its destination three days later. This is a listing of the lesser military hospitals that were scattered throughout the city. The facilities ranged in bed capacity from 550 to a smallpox hospital handling only 50, 50 cases at a time. The Filbert Street Hospital was located on the southeast corner of 16th and Filbert Streets, not far from what is now the Reading Terminal Market and City Hall. Established in 1862, its lower floors were utilized as a depot for military clothing, while the upstairs housed 430 beds. In 1863, and even after the end of the war, the Filbert Street Hospital was converted into a convalescent facility and named the Soldiers and Sailors Home. This cover portrays some of the gruesome sights resulting from the aftermath of battle. 
After completion of both the Satterley and Mauer Hospital, a number of the smaller hospitals within the Philadelphia area were closed, reducing the overall number of government facilities to 13. McClellan Hospital, located in the vicinity of Wayne Junction in North Philadelphia at Germantown Road, was the last military hospital established during the war. It was constructed upon the same elliptical plan as the Mauer Hospital. The McClellan was reported to have had 1,080 beds. Soldier's letter seen here from May 1875 bears a sanitary commission logo and a McClellan Hospital corner card signed by its chaplain. The Sanitary Commission was a private relief organization created in 1861 to support sick and wounded soldiers throughout the course of the Civil War. This is another soldier's letter sent from McClellan, this one bearing the U.S. Christian Commission logo. It was sent from Philadelphia, possibly to someone's sweetheart in Vermont. The Christian Commission was an organization that furnished supplies, medical services, and religious literature to Union tro troops. It supplied Protestant chaplains and social workers and collaborated with the Sanitary Commission in providing medical care. This soldier's letter, signed by a chaplain, J. H. McFarlane, bears an indistinct corner card from the General Hospital located at Broad and Cherry Streets, which is just north of the present City Hall. The Broad Street Hospital, opened in February 1862, had several branches on Broad Street, which is the city's major thoroughfare. The 700-bed Cherry Street branch was closed upon completion of the Mauer Hospital in January of 1863, but reopened again briefly after the Battle of Gettysburg in July 1863. The South Street Hospital was located at 24th and South Streets, which was not far from the Schuylkill River. Due to its reputation for performing frequent amputations, it was known as the Stump Hospital. The facility maintained a census of 253 beds. Malingering was extremely common during the Civil War. A new recruit feigning an injury or illness could get himself discharged from the service and then obtain a bounty of $300 by re-enlisting somewhere else. The use of ether anesthesia to assist in the detection of feigned illness was recommended in manuals published during the war by both Union and Confederate surgeons. At the Christian Street Hospital, founded in May 1861, a soldier could be made to give himself away from a feigned illness while under the influence of ether anesthesia. An historic marker located next to the school that is presently located on the corner of 10th and Christian Streets in South Philadelphia memorialized the Christian Street Hospital where Dr. S. Weir Mitchell, Dr. Keene, Dr. Morehouse, and others used electric current anesthesia drugs and other experiments in pioneering the treatment of nerve and related disorders. This ragged cover is addressed to an individual at the Turner Street Lane Hospital, which is located in North Philadelphia at 20th and Norris Streets. The hospital specialized in nerve disorders as a result of war injuries. Opened in May 1863, it contained 315 beds. Dr. Silas Ware Mitchell, who was also practicing at the Christian Street Hospital, gained prominence studying nerve disorder and injuries such as paralysis, spasm, and epilepsy. Epilepsy was considered to be a nervous disorder at that time. The Kyler Hospital, located in Germantown, opened in September 1862. It had a bed capacity of 700 and was established in the rear of the local town hall. This contemporary photograph shows the Kyler Hospital grounds. The Summit House was located on Darby Road in the area known as Pascoville, which was just on the outskirts of the city in West Philadelphia. It had a bed capacity of 550. The U.S. Army Department of the Episcopal Hospital was located at Front Street and Lehigh Avenue in North Philadelphia. It was staffed by two surgeons and had a bed capacity of 325. The hospital's original wing was built in 1860. Episcopal Hospital still remains today as a functioning institution. 
The Union Volunteer Refreshment Saloon and Hospital was located in South Philadelphia at the foot of Washington Avenue, just adjacent to the Delaware River. It provided over 600,000 meals for troops, as well as laundry and writing materials. Letters were posted for soldiers free of charge. It was deemed to be the first military hospital that opened in the city, housing only 15 beds. As the war expanded, it was forced to move to larger headquarters. The saloon opened in May 1861 and closed in August 1865. The cover's inset is enlarged on the right, showing a very busy presence of troops, as well as onlooking ladies and gentlemen. This cover provides another colorful view of the Union Volunteer Refreshment Saloon. It was franked by Congressman William D. Kelly, a Republican member of the U.S. House of Representatives from Pennsylvania, who had advocated the recruitment of black troops in the Civil War. Here is yet another view of the Union Volunteer Saloon. The cover seen here was addressed to a northern soldier stationed in Chattanooga, Tennessee, in Sheridan's 2nd Division. The City Bounty Fund Commission was a committee appointed under a city ordinance in December of 1863 to pay inducements, otherwise known as bounties, to those willing to volunteer to fight for the cause. The letter is addressed to Bazilla S. Brown, who was one of the gentlemen responsible for the initial organization of the Union Refreshment Saloon. This is the scarcest of the Union Refreshment Saloon patriotic covers. An enlargement of the previously seen cover shows a small tent at the bottom of the illustration imprinted with the name Fort Brown. This was the affectionate name given by soldiers to the Union Saloon in honor of its founder, Mr. Bazilla S. Brown. This is an actual photo in the form of a character visite of the exterior of the Union Refreshment Saloon. This very colorful cover shows the Cooper Shop Volunteer Refreshment Saloon. The Cooper was the friendly rival of the Union Saloon, and the stories of the two were said to be inseparable. The Cooper Shop provided meals for 400,000 men, including 15,000 Southerners. The Cooper Shop was located in South Philadelphia on Otsego Street, which was close to the Delaware River and the original Philadelphia Navy Yard. This is the reverse of a cover showing views of the Cooper's exterior buildings as well as, as its busy interior dining hall. The refreshment saloons depended heavily upon donations from its many benefactors. Here is a receipt dated December 22, 1864 for donation of sausage. The Citizens Union Volunteer Hospital Association was a third such organization of its kind in Philadelphia. It cared for more than 30,000 soldiers during the first year of its operation. This is another view of the Citizens Volunteer Hospital. It was located at the corner of Broad Street and Washington Avenue, which was an important road that was crisscrossed with the railroad tracks that were essential for the transportation of injured soldiers from the battlefield to Philadelphia hospitals. In spite of its abominable devastation, with loss of life, limb, and property. One important positive aspect surfaced as a result of the war. The experience gained by medical personnel in the management and treatment of infectious disease and trauma was a huge stepping stone towards future scientific advances. It certainly could be said that Philadelphia's numerous Civil War institutions had played a very large part in achieving these goals.